And that may also be the second reason that I think it may have been okay for David to have partaken of this bread, which is it's because it was God's bread. And what does God do? He feeds the hungry. That's part of the intended purpose of God's bread and, and everything else is he uses the things that are his to give to his children and care for his people when they're in need. Hey, fellow tacticians, be sure to like this video and subscribe and ring that little notification bell that supports this channel's conservative content, which is good for me, good for you, good for America, but really bad for the dark cyber overlords at YouTube. In 1775, the Continental Congress created the Chaplain Corps. Under the command of General George Washington, each soldier was required to attend worship service every Sunday. While other armies advanced on their feet, Washington's troops advanced on their knees. It's time for The Chaplain's Report with Caleb Colquitt on tactics. All right, and our Chaplain's Report for today does come from the book of 1 Samuel. Yes, that's right. We are getting back into our series on 1 Samuel. I know we kind of took a hiatus from it for a little bit, but we are back in 1 Samuel, and the only piece of context you really need to know for this is this is in the time where uh, David is fleeing Saul at this point. So let's go ahead and look at that. This is 1 Samuel 12, or sorry, 1 Samuel 21 verses 4 through 6. The priest answered David and said, There is no ordinary bread on hand, but there is consecrated bread if only the young men have kept themselves from women. David answered the priest and said to him, be assured, women have been denied us as previously when I left at the bodies of the young men were consecrated, though it was an ordinary journey. How much more then will their bodies be consecrated today? So the priest gave him consecrated bread, for there was no bread there except for the bread of the presence, which was removed from its place before the Lord in order to put hot bread in its place on the day it was taken away. So, you know the context. This is when David is fleeing Saul, and he comes across a temple. He and his men are hungry. They've been running and, and been trying to escape Saul for a long time now. They got nothing to eat. And so they go to the temple and they ask, Hey, do you have any food around? Can you feed us? And the priests say, All we got is consecrated bread. All we have is the bread that is supposed to be given to us. It is supposed to be set apart in the priest are supposed to be the ones that eat it. And they said, but we'll let you have it as long as you have been away from women. Basically, what he's saying is as long as the men are pure and clean and they are not unclean, whether they, you know, that would have been being with a woman or having, um, having been around a dead body, any of those things that would have defiled them according to the law of Moses. And so I find this interesting because this is a example of David kind of breaking the law and, and not necessarily doing what God would have wanted, which is bizarre that a Bible hero and a man that is uh, after God's own heart would be asking for this thing to be done for him. And this is something that I, I've thought about a lot because Jesus, you remember, actually refers to this little episode in Samuel where he and his disciples are snacking on wheat on the Sabbath day. And they said, why are you engaging in labor? Why are you gathering grain basically on the Sabbath? Even though all they were doing is like just reaching down and grabbing it. They weren't even like, you know, milling it or anything like that. They were just snacking because they were hungry. And so they ask him about that. And Jesus says, have you not read that when, Jesus, when David was tired and fleeing from Saul, that he ate the bread that was unlawful for him to eat? And so this is Jesus actually acknowledging that this is something that was unlawful, at least according to the law of Moses, for him to do. And that's something that, you know, bothers me and, and has been a real struggle for me understanding this. It's kind of a weird episode in God's word. So I guess that brings me to the question, why was it okay for David to eat this bread? Well, I think there's a couple of possible explanations, and I'm not sure that I even really have a good answer for this. But one is that the priest offered it freely. 
because the purpose of the consecrated bread was for the people to sacrifice to God something, because some sacrifices were animals, some were things like wine and drink offerings, and then there were also offerings of bread. And remember that the Levites, they devoted themselves to temple worship. And because of that, they couldn't farm and ranch and do everything that other people did to make gain. And so there had to be a way for them to live and eat and survive as well. And so the way that that happened is there was a portion of the sacrifices given to God, given to the people working at the temple, the Levites, in order to sustain them. And that's the bread that they had on hand. And there is a prohibition for people that are not Levites doing this for exactly that reason, because they don't want the sacrifices of God going to other people that was supposed to be set aside for the Levites to be able to have and to sustain them. But the priest did offer it. It was his bread by right, and he chose to give it away. In the same way, it would be wrong for if I have a sandwich, somebody just walk up and take my sandwich. That would be a sin, right? That would be stealing. But if I offer it to somebody, even though it's not theirs per se, and it would be not lawful for them to have that sandwich, if I give it to them, then it's different. And I think that's one possible explanation here. That because the priest offered it, even though it was his by law, he was able to say, okay, yeah, I know it's mine and I have a right to it, but I'm going to convey it to somebody else anyway. I think that, that might have been a factor because you notice David doesn't even ask specifically for the consecrated bread. The Levite here offers it to him. And even so, even though the there was a, a transference of who had the right to it, you'll notice that even then, the priest had regulations. He had conditions placed upon it. He's like, okay, I, I know I'm giving you the bread, but this is consecrated bread. This is God's bread. You can't eat this bread unless you guys have kept yourselves clean and you you were not unclean before God. And this was a big thing in the law of Moses. And so I find that really interesting that even though the priest does offer it, and even though the priest is kind of bending the rules here for David, he says, okay, but but this is holy bread. You you guys can't just have it no matter what. Like there there are conditions to be met. You must come before God in a holy and clean manner before you can partake of the bread, even though I'm giving it to you freely. And so that's really interesting to me. That just like us, if we're going to have something from God, it's a free gift and God is giving it to us of his own generosity and goodwill, but there's still an expectation for us to keep ourselves holy and clean for him in that process. That it's not just an unconditional thing, that there are things that God expects from us when it comes to this. And I think that ultimately what was the reason for that, the, the rationale for the priest saying that, is he understood that whether he was eating the bread or whether somebody else was eating the bread, it was God's bread, it wasn't his bread. E even if it had just been a normal day, David hadn't come by, his men hadn't come by, and he was going to eat the consecrated bread himself, even if that episode had taken place, it, it would have been God's bread then too. It wouldn't really have been his. And I think that's just a, a great way to look at it. Because as Christians, we're sometimes given stewardship over certain things. There are certain things that God has blessed us with or given to us to take care of, and we need to acknowledge that ultimately all things are God's in the end. Whether it's the money that we get from our, our jobs, whether it's our possessions, our cars, our apartments, our houses, uh, whether it's some of the material blessings that are even more frivolous, like our TVs or our, our you know computers or things like that, or it's something like children. These are all things that God has given to us for a time, for a specific purpose, but ultimately we're supposed to acknowledge that they're all his anyway. And because of that, there are conditions and expectations that come with that, just like the consecrated bread. And so that's a, a reality that I think that this story is trying to convey. And that may also be the second reason that I think it may have been okay for David to have partaken of this bread, which is... It's because it was God's bread. And what does God do? He feeds the hungry. That's part of the intended purpose of God's bread and, and everything else is he uses the things that are his to give to his children and care for his people when they're in need. And that may have been the rationale that the, the Levite uses here too. I don't know. 
but it kind of seems like that would be a good answer because it coincides with what Jesus says about this episode later on, which is if there are people that are hungry, if there are people that need something, do you really think that God would rather those people go without? Or do you think that those people that those people really do need uh, to be provided for by God. And, and I think that he was saying that, look, the, the bread's already there. God has already provided. And so it's incumbent for us to ha uh, adhere to the regulations and expectations that God has for us. But at the same time, ultimately the purpose of this being given to God is to do God's work and feeding the hungry is part of that work. And so I think that that might have been some of the rationale. I don't, again, like I said at the beginning of this, I don't know that I have a really good answer. I don't know that I can conclusively say this is why it was permissible because I don't know that the Bible really provides that and, and maybe that's intentional. I, I wish that I had a better answer, but I'm not sure that I really do. Uh, and then finally, the, the last little point that I want to make, and this is really almost more of a passing thought, but I think it ties into the bread thing. Why is it that sex was the the deal breaker here. Why was he saying, no, you, you have to have stayed away from women to eat this bread. Now, again, what he was suggesting here is he was not insinuating that they would have done anything else unclean, but he was saying, that's really the only thing that we suspect your men might have been engaged in that would make them unclean. Cause I doubt that that priest is looking at them and thinking that they've been around a lot of dead bodies or anything like that. And so that's the only thing that he suspects might have made them unclean. I, I think that he could have just as easily said, well, you can't have been with any women or had leprosy or been around that or, or, or you know, um, having recently gone through a circumcision, which, of course, all of his men would have been circumcised as babies being Jewish. Uh, so he couldn't he couldn't have said any of those things. But, you know, sleeping with their wives would have been the first thing that he thought of. And so let's look at that for a second. Why is that the thing that would have made them unclean? even though it was something that would have been acceptable to God and within the bonds of marriage, that even sex, when used correctly, and even when it's, it's something that God would approve of and God would be okay with within the bonds of marriage, that sometimes it's a good idea to abstain from that or any other fleshly desire in order to be holy before him and in order to strengthen yourself spiritually. That's what fasting is, isn't it? When we fast, we forego our needs and desires for food for a time to be able to spiritually focus ourselves. And some people it works great for, some people they don't really see the need to, and that's not really something that's required. But there is an acknowledgement by Scripture that sometimes giving up our physical wants and our physical needs in order to center ourselves spiritually is a good tactic to grow closer to God. Uh, 1 Corinthians, for example, mentions that there were couples that would abstain from being with one another, and these are married couples, for a time in order to grow spiritually and then would reconnect. And Paul actually advises them not to abstain from sex for too long, you know, lest they, they create a spiritual problem for themselves and, and you know, might accidentally lust. And so the, the Bible acknowledges our need for this. It acknowledges that we have a desire for it. And it actually even... <laughs> Weirdly enough, in some uh, scenarios, suggest that we need to engage in it in order to keep temptation at bay. But it does also emphasize here that there are also times to forego it in order to focus on our spiritual bodies and our spiritual capacity and try to uh, get in a more spiritual mindset rather than worrying on our physical one. And so that's something that I find uh, I find very interesting about this little episode. But I think if we were to tie a bow on all this, sometimes it's important to realize that not even a great need outweighs God's law, but sometimes a great need does call on God's people to share what they've been blessed with, that even if they have the right to it, that they can give of themselves willingly, and isn't that exactly what Christ did to give of himself? That even though he had the right to take up his own life, even though he had the right to say, no, I don't want to die for everybody else. It's, it's not fair and I don't want to do it. That he chose to give of himself anyway. And that's the kind of savior that we have. A savior that is often referred to himself as the bread of life. Stay the course, friends. <laughs>
Hey, thanks for watching this video. If you made it all the way to the end, it must mean you like what you saw and should like and subscribe. That or you were just super bored, wound up here by accident, and were too lazy to turn the video off before now. Now, I hope you're the first type of person, but if you happen to be the second type, doesn't really matter to me. I got a view out of you either way. Huh. Profiting off of the laziness of others. This must be what it feels like to be a Democrat.